crazy light, um, you'll get the gist. He looks quite dramatic, doesn't he? So here we are, the new Norman. Um, he was, he is resin. He was a pale grey, very boring to show. Here's all the different bits, apart from the base, which is being soaked as we speak, and a wash run over it. Um, in the sort of uh, promotional material, he is um, he's a a hospitaller knight. So he's on crusade. I don't think I'm going to do that. I might do something a bit more Europe based uh, because basically the equipment and and uh, clothing and stuff is all all the same it's just the coat of arms on the surface that varies so this is him time to start painting right a bit of a shambles on the work surface here uh, but painting the figure uh, and it's going okay I hope although I've started to run out of daylight so I'll wait until midday tomorrow to before I really pass judgment and I think my camera's steaming up anyway I'll plough on for the minute because hopefully it shouldn't affect um, future shots let's put it that way anyway here's our man and he is the one of Europe's, I would say he was Europe's preeminent mercenary of the early 1200s, and uh, he's got to show that. So, while I'd like him to be, God, we really are steaming up. Hang on, back in a minute. So, while I'd like him to be a, a very hard tough business like fellow this man has to push his authority against the perceived and rather complacent authority of the landed aristocracy so he's got to work both ways he's got to show wealth and authority to the aristocracy, but he's got to show kind of um, success, but not softiness, not luxury, to the mercenaries who he is employing and leading. So his own kind of business based war band. Um, so he's got to cut a dash in both directions, which is complex for him. So he needs to show wealth more than anything else and his own coat of arms which is a black griffin uh, with a bit of gold detailing and a bit of grey highlighting. We're not all the way there yet. Uh, so that's him and that's his kind of gold thread entwined surcoat and cape. As for the shield, like I say, there's detail to be done yet, but at the same time, uh, I've got to scuff it up a bit because I want this fella to be fighting at the um, Second Battle of Lincoln, the one that's known as the Fair of Lincoln, which we'll deal with shortly. Uh, so there's got to be damage across the shield, so I don't want to go too far with it. And also for this fella, it was a fast and intense campaign. Don't know that it was a long campaign, but he was busy uh, and he didn't have time to um, smarten up any or get, you know, his shield repaired too often, that kind of thing. So there's got to be not only battle damage, not too much. There are, I don't know that it's shown up, there are some scuff marks um, built into the design, kind of slash marks. Uh, but also things like any gold leaf work and that kind of thing has got to be paled down. And then um, there are a couple of rips on his surcoat from sword slashes which I've got to get into further. 
so he's he's far from perfect by now. He's tired and uh, worn is the best way to put it. And the shield and his clothes have got to show that. So there'll be dirt, there'll be fading, there will be battle damage. So that's our man so far. Falk de Brut or de Brewers um, primary tough guy of Northwest Europe in uh, the early 1200s. No offence meant to William Longsword or William Marshall, but both of those were growing a little old by now. This guy is in his prime and is callous. Well, he's sort of... Oh, the light's abysmal again. But anyway, he's toned down a bit here and there and a little bit of muck on uh, the bottom of his cape around his feet and rather disappointingly I'd painted his um, spurs or the straps for his spurs quite nicely and they're now gone but I suppose that's what happens and um, a little bit of whee weathering on his belts the lower one doesn't have a buckle the the belt is split into two like a forked tongue at one end and has two slits cut through the other end and you push them through and tie them in a knot. Uh, that style didn't last but anyway. So I'm going to stick some more bits on him and then we start blending everything in. We've run into minor problems which have started to become major problems. The lower section of the helmet, the face guard, doesn't fit by quite a long way. Now ordinarily I would kind of leave it and say oh look there's a problem but it's such a bad fit that it was just hideous. If you get that nasal bar to touch the uh, gold reinforcing rim which it does, there's a shadow over it, so I apologise, it doesn't look like it's fitting, but it does. Then the side sections, which should join up as well, don't fit by a long way, over a millimetre. Um, I think I needed to cut the man's face off, but there we go. So I've ended up putting filler in, and it's really, it's a big space, but it's not very big where filler's concerned. And so we're halfway through the process here. I've started uh, filing parts of it down. I'm taking a lot of the surface off the actual model, which is a real shame. Um, and then it's all got to be painted up. So we're halfway through that process. I've got to square up that left hand side. Although some did have curve, but then I've got to get a curve on this side. So it's, it's now become a mess, a proper mess. Um, and we'll see what filing and painting can do then. And there he is with the shield on, except you can't really see it at this angle. It was not a happy fit at all. There's a kind of shape. Uh, there's a a cushioned area on the inside of the shield, usually leather stuffed with wool, and oops, oops, I've got this all wrong, haven't I? And um, on that is a shape which is supposed to correspond with a groove cut in his forearm, mm, and it didn't really. So we've ended up with, I don't know if this is going to be visible under any circumstances, but we've ended up with the straps that go across his arm not really fitting neatly onto the shield. So maybe when I can stand him up we'll be able to see properly. But there we have the shield on the man and a lot of shadow. I don't know how I've got this wrong, but 
But I have. That's terrible, isn't it? Yeah. Let's do this. Still not great. It's all a bit gloomy out for midsummer. But if we get a nice day, I'll take him outside and we'll get some proper light. Anyway, shield on. Now, extra belts. And I probably should have stuffed the sword in place. We'll see how that goes. I bet you the shield will fall off anyway, but there we go. It didn't really come as a shock to find to find I'm casting a shadow all the time. Actually that does come as a shock, but didn't come as a shock to find. Why has that got darker? To find Wakey Wakey camera. Anyway, to find there's a sword there already. Oh, that was a labour, wasn't it? It didn't really come as a surprise to find that the sword was there already. I seem to be a bit dozy today, and so does the camera. I blame the weather, I blame the lack of sunlight. And eventually he's done. Um, you'll notice an extremely tufty uh, base. That's because it was a really quite unspectacular affair. Uh, and I had to break it to get it flat. And anyway, this guy's in Britain. I think, the, I've said before, the model's probably a crusader. So it was a, just a flat, dimpled surface with one rock. There's a kind of desert situation. Whereas, I want him in tufty, marshy, damp old Britain, just outside Lincoln. Um, and so that gives us him. Let's have a quick look. Let's put him here. Quick look at the shield. Uh, scuffed rather than damaged. Mucky around the base, which is now pointing outwards. And, oh, I meant to do the eye on the dragon. Oh, that's a shame. And there he is, taking us in, so to speak. Observing us, taking us in. Um, how was the model? Not as good as I'd hoped, actually. A lot of parts do not quite fit. It lacks the precision of the other ones that I've done so far. Most of those just fell together in your hands, apart from maybe one or two little bits. Whereas this guy, there's a, a lot of effort involved, particularly with the smaller sections. So, I had hoped for better. But he does look alright. He's, he's a good, he's got a good pose, his posture, his balance. Um, you know, the weight, the centre of gravity on the man is excellent. He does look incredibly plausible. So, all in all, I really like him. The sculpting is gorgeous. It's just the refinement of how the parts fit together that's been the problem. That's all. Thank you, Crows, for the authentic background sounds. Thank you, Crows, for the fly past as well. It is a shame we don't have a sunny day. Um, but hopefully you get the gist of him. So there we have Falk de Brute, or sometimes de Brewers. Brute, I think, is probably historically more or uh, personality wise more accurate and uh, done basically I'll just give you an idea of the kind of landscape I had in mind um, so rather than car tyres you'd have cart tracks which could be very deep and very wide and very rutted. But look at this tufty 
world of chaos. It probably isn't going to show up too well. But the unevenness of the, all this long grass. I mean, if you had a battle in this, you'd be almost up to your hips in it. And obviously you'd trample it down, but it depends where the guy's been. And, um, you know, how busy everything's been in the spot he's standing in. But this, uh, this is your typical tufty, mess, messy British environment. I've just stuck him in a very leafy patch to stop the glare of the light behind him. And uh, perhaps he's showing up a little better like this. So, a small man in a big jungle. Sounds like me in most of my life. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fair to say. I've had to go indoors. It was horrible out there. Although I wanted all that natural greenery. Never mind. So here we are with a backdrop. And uh, that will have to do. <laughs> At least we get a sense of the colour on this guy the strength of the red and so on. Um, the tufty grass is from um, the world of model railways which always comes in handy. It looks terribly thick on this piece of board but uh, when I've taken him outside and put him in amongst moss and stuff it looks alright so I'm not that worried just a bit. Uh, in parenthesis, as they might say, here are the tufts. So, uh, I think I'm going to have to deploy some of these, perhaps the particularly long ones here, on one of the half tracks, a 172nd. I'll mention the half tracks in a minute, a 172nd uh, X matchbox. Um, I've forgotten what it is. It's the, the American half track with the anti aircraft gun on the back. But a friend gave it to me and he'd lost the tracks. So it's a no track, I suppose. So I'll have to cover it up. Anyway, there's your tufts. I feel this is his best side. Where anyway, he's sort of almost looking down his nose at us. If we can gauge where that might be. So that's our man. Like I say, nice figure, bad fits. That's my main issue. Oh, a bit of head shadow there. Not good. So as usual, thanks for watching. Sorry about the delay again. Uh, seems I had, um, or I may have had for some years without realising, hay fever. And I live in the middle of all that long grass, for goodness sake. Um... And uh, my eyes were streaming and I couldn't finish this off. I've got two um, half tracks as well I'm in the middle of doing. And uh, I just, it just got so bad I phoned the doctors and they said, that's not COVID, that's hay fever. Well, if only I'd known. Anyway, here we are, from a, a novice hay fever sufferer. No wonder I thought I've had terrible colds every year for years and I can't shift them. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hopefully more again soon. Bye for now. Well, that was a bit pathetic. Bye for now. Bye for... Oh, I don't know. See ya. Right, very briefly, the Second Battle of Lincoln. This one's in uh, 1217. Falk had been King John's right-hand man, really. But King John died in 15. And Falk staying loyal to the concept of the sort of central government which is now run by William Marshall on behalf of King Henry III, who's only a little boy. During which time, um, the French invaded. We won't even get into that. The whole battle's worth a, a couple of hours in its own right. But anyway, so it's complicated. The French have invaded because they feel like uh, there's enough support from the sort of unhappy English barons. Uh, they got that wrong, and not limp by and large the English barons all pulled together to kick the French out. But the French 
uh, not only were besieging Dover, but were marching about the place. And they ended up, uh, they sort of everybody coming together at Lincoln, a city on a high hill with a very fine cathedral. And uh, it was walled and gated and very well protected. William Marshall and Falk managed to get to the city first and dominated the high ground. And as the French sort of come up, uh, Falk's mercenary crossbowmen, in particular, plus some archers and stuff, were able to rain bolts down upon the French. There was sort of a lot of fighting. The French got in. Uh, the people of Lincoln were largely on the cathedral roof. I know that sounds bonkers and later collapsed, but collapsed, but they were on other roofs too, and they were lobbing uh, mud and moss down on the French that they were peeling off the roofs. And then a cow got stuck in a gateway that the French were trying to get back out through, and it caused a bit of a log jam, and everybody just got bottled up, and it, which is it turned into a complete farce which is why it's called the Fair of Lincoln. Um, one of Falk's high points, I feel, 